you started from scratch with a new niche, how would you recommend someone use Wikipedia to help out the web map to help map out a new website architecture? So what I'm going to do is jump into Firefox, guys, just so we can have a clean uh, Google browser here. And uh, I'm just going to, you know, walk through or talk through some of how I would do this. So, for example, um, you know, one of the things I want to do is find out what are some of the keywords, products or services, essentially, that are uh, a, a business offers. And then I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to search Google with for keywords and in a pen for various product or service keywords associated with that business. And then I'm going to append Wikipedia to the search. So I don't know. Let's just let's just do um, I don't know roofing, right? Let's just do roofing, Wikipedia. Um, unless somebody has a better idea, let's just go with this one. So why I do this, guys, is because I want to understand. Look, Google's large language model was influenced in large part, right? One of the largest or biggest influencers of the Google's large language model was. Wikipedia, that and several other databases, uh, semantic databases, but Wikipedia entities or entries are um, how Google understands a lot of our language for real. And, and in fact, if you look at Google business categories, a lot of those categories were developed from Wikipedia entities. Sometimes they're combined entities to create one category. Uh, so multiple entities combined to create one category. But that is what one of the ways that Google trained its large language model. And so if you can understand Wikipedia entities and how they relate to products and services within a particular industry, then you can get an understanding of how Google understands the language associated with that industry. And I, I use that word specifically, the language associated with the industry, because it's one thing to do this research where you're appending search query or Wikipedia to search queries, product or service keywords related to the, pro the industry that you're researching. But why do we do that? Number one, it's we, we're, we're appending Wikipedia to the search because I want to know what Google, because Google's sorting by relevance to that search query, right? So if the query is roofing and in Wikipedia, Google is going to show Wikipedia entities uh, according by, to their relevance to the, the, the query, the search query of roofing, if that makes sense. So I can, first of all, understand what are the main entities associated with the products or services associated with this industry and how are they sorted by relevance according to Google. So I don't want to go directly to Wikipedia and search this because they're going to have a different search result. Uh, I want to know what Google, how Google sorts in, re in, in these entities, if that's clear. So, <clears throat> but then also um, in addition to like uh, just identifying the top level categories or topics, entities, which is what I like to do first. So for example, I look for roofing and you can see that there's roofing and then there's roof, right? And then there's roofer, right? So we can scroll down through here and we can start seeing other things that are also relevant, like domestic roof construction. Okay, that's cool. We'll open that one up too. We're going to look through here. Now we see different types of roofing, right? R metal roof, a roof shingle, which is a roofing material. A lot of this is going to be covered in the main roof category or topic anyways. Uh, and you'll see that, like, for example, you'll see different down here where it says like roof types or something like that. Um, there'll be links that go, will say main article. And then it points to like, for example, asphalt shingles, right? Like that, that you'll see that there will be subtopics in some cases, and then it'll link out to others. But the point that I'm trying to make here is first, we want to identify what are the top level topics or entities, according to Google, that are related to our, our search query, like the, a product or service search query in the, for that particular industry. And this is just one. We can go through and I'll show you some different examples. But then you want to open them up and then start to kind of, for example, this one for roofing, it shows that roofing can mean roofing material, roof topping, or the profession of a roofer, right? And then see also roof for general description of roofs and roofing. So this is one of those pages that basically show, hey, this comp, this con this word can be used, can have different meanings depending on which context it is used. And then you just scroll through and identify which context it is. Let me give you an example of that, and uh, so that you, this this can make sense. And and then one other thing I want to talk about is if I, um, I'm just going to say, Culpeper, Virginia. That's not where I'm at right now. But it in in addition to looking at the uh, Wikipedia entities. What I recommend, and this this is like I said, one of those like disambiguation pages or whatever that you call it that, that show the different contexts that that can be used in. And then you would select the appropriate context and click click through, and then read through that language. And that's where I was getting at. If you get through the to the topic, uh, the entity page essentially, the entry, 
in Wikipedia, it's one th it's it's one thing to understand how they are sorted and relate to the initial or the 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 seed query, right? But then it's another to scan through these documents and understand what go what what how Google understands these topics or entities, right? And so one of the ways you could do that is by scanning through, especially the first couple of paragraphs. But what I like to do is also kind of for the the top level topics such as roof. I also want to look through at the structure of the page, okay? Because that's going to give me ideas on how I can structure the site structure in its entirety when we're talking about top level topic terms, but then also page structure, right? There's two really important things when optimizing a site. There's a number of important things, but two really important things are site structure and page structure. Google doesn't rank websites, guys. Google ranks web pages. So page structure is incredibly important. But a website's authority and strength and structure, internal linking, et cetera, has an influence on a page's ability to rank, a significant influence on a page's ability to rank. So we always want to start by optimizing at the page level, right? But we need to make sure that that page is, is part of a site that is optimized well, too, has sound structure, good internal linking, et cetera, right? Because again, especially because of helpful content update, guys, which is now apparently integrated as another core layer of the algorithm. So that's going back to David's question earlier about which one of or Google's recent updates, how does that affect? Well, which which recent update? There are so many of them, right? The helpful content update, which was out in what, September last year, is now apparently integrated as, as just another core layer of the algorithm. Anyways, part of that specific update was that previously a web page that was part of a shit site, a, a really well-optimized web page that was part of a shit site could potentially rank really, really well. I've seen it many times in the search results where the site itself is garbage, but a particular page was done incredibly well and it ranks very well. Well, now that's a lot less likely because a page can be pulled down by the overall quality score of the site, if that makes sense. So if the site has a multiplier of 0 0.7 because it's a lower quality site and Google's demerited it or uh, you know, basically reduced its overall quality score by a 30%. And this is just, I'm just throwing out numbers there, but now that one page on the site that might be optimized hundred percent, perfect optimization, if there were such a thing, uh, now that's actually has that modifier, that multiplier of dot seven applied to it so that it's not going to have that quality score that it could have, which means it might not perform as well or likely won't perform as well as it would have prior to that type of an update. So site structure and the site in its entirety has an effect now, a, a more of an effect on how a page performs. So that's why I said I like to look at the, all the top level topics first, and then we can drill down deeper into the subtopics and supporting topics, et cetera. But I always like to identify the top level topics first and then uh, and kind of read through the pages to understand the language associated. I'm going to come back to that. I've been I'm, I'm trying to get to another point here, and I will in just a moment. So I want to read through the language and especially pay attention to those where you see bolded keywords like this, because that that means that those are synonymous with each other. And so I want to understand kind of topic structure and the, the, the hierarchy, right? How how the topics integrate with the subtopics and supporting topics. Right. And then I also want so that I can glean some information on how to potentially optimize the site structure especially when it's in one topical category, when it's, when you have multiple topical categories, like for example, maybe an HVAC electrical and uh, plumbing contractor, because a lot of HVAC contractors also do plumbing and electrical services. Those are three separate business categories, three separate topical categories. That makes sense. So uh, I want to first identify how to site structure the site or the, the, the category, if, if it's going to have multiple topical categories. And then I also want to look at how to structure individual pages and I can get glean some recommendations, so to speak, or some um, ideas from the from the Wikipedia structure. Okay, and also think about this, guys. Wikipedia is a powerhouse on ranking because it's so authoritative. Number one, but number two, because of the internal linking. And what does Wikipedia do incredibly well? Internal linking, right? So that's another thing I've talked about many times recently about site structures, and I've spent a lot of time testing over a year and a half, almost two years testing various site structures and different configurations of SEO titles, H1s, H2s, URLs, et cetera. And what I found was what I settled on and I've shared a lot about, and that is have really good internal linking. Like, and that's the kind of sites that I build now. I modeled a lot of how Wikipedia does internal linking, 
And that's precisely why those, or at least I assume that is why those sites that I've been building recently have been performing incredibly well for local search because of the way that I've linked them together, uh, done internal linking, et cetera. So th the next part that I wanted to get at here was if we go into, if, if I look for Roofer Culpepper VA just to pull up a local business and I go into maps, guys, here's another example of what I wanted to get at. Um, look at the, the, the Google business category. It's roofing contractor. You guys see that? Well, what does the Wikipedia entity for roofer say? It says a roofer, roof mechanic, or roofing contractor is a tradesperson who specializes in roof construction. Roofers replace, repair, and install the roofs of buildings, et cetera, et cetera. So guys, the point is read through this because it gives you a better understanding of which words you can use. Because although the primary category is roofing contractor, for this, for 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 most roofing business, most roofing businesses, right? The the primary Google business category is roofing contractor. You can see that that is synonymous with roofer. So the 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 words, the terms, roofer, roof mechanic, roofing contractor are all synonymous with each other. They're interchangeable. All right. And and by the way, um, also as I mentioned before, like if we look for contractor, um, Wikipedia. What do we see, guys? Contractor is another one of those terms that has multiple meanings depending on which context it is used. And so in the context when we're talking about a roofing contractor, although a roofing contractor, we can interchange with the term just roofer, and that would be absolutely uh, acceptable because, again, these are all three synonymous with each other. So, But the point that I'm trying to make here is what is a roofing contractor? A roofing contractor is a roofer, right? We already know that. But it's, it can also be a combination of two separate, damn, a lot of wind blowing. <laughs> Felt like my RV was going to blow off its, off its uh, over, over on its side. Anyway, um, uh, a roofing contractor is also a, uh, can, it can be a, two different topics combined to create, which would be roofing and contractor, to create roofing contractor. Okay, and that, that's what we're looking at here. For example, contractor in the kind of context that we would be using it for a roofer would be general contractor, an individual or organization responsible for the construction of a building or other facility. So what would roofing contractor be? We already know it's synonymous with roofer. So we we can we can pass over that if we wanted to. But we could also say that roofing contractor is a combination of roofing right here, which roofing can mean roof, roof, general construction, uh, you know, general description of roofs and roofing or whatever. But it, it can also be a combination of roof and, con roof and con general contractor, if that makes sense, because and then that creates roofing contractor. So another example of that, guys, just to be clear, would be like, for example, if I go look for, um, and here's an example, if I look for tree removal, for example, Wikipedia, what do you see? The first topic that comes up is tree care. Right. And why is that? Well, because tree care is kind of the overall topic that covers a lot of the stuff that tree tree contractors do. For example, I'm going to come back to roofing in a minute, guys. But you see how tree care also has a specific subtopic called tree removal. Right now. So tree removal is a is a subtopic of tree care. Right. So it's like a subservice or whatever, uh, a service within the greater tree care topic or whatever. But. If you take a look at, like, if we come back over here and we were to look at tree service, for example, you're going to see the same thing's going to come up. It's going to be tree care first, and an arborist comes through a second, et cetera. But what is tree service? Tree service is actually, if we look up tree, Wikipedia. Oops, Wikipedia. That's really butchered that one. Wikipedia. Tree service is actually... Service is another, just like contractor, can be has multiple meanings depending on which context it's used. In this case, we're talking about service economics as it relates to economics. So the non-material equivalent of a good in economics and marketing within a service product continuum. That is a terrible, terrible description of service economics. But there's a here's a better one. That was like you have to be Ivy League. <laughs> degree to understand what the hell that meant. A service is an act or use for which a consumer firm or government is willing to pay. So tree service is actually a combination of tree and service economics to create tree service. So again, if we come back over here and look at tree service, Culpepper, VA, we go into maps, take a look at the topical category, guys. It is 
tree service, which is those two, com two, two entities combined to create the one category. Does that make sense? One more example of that, and then I'll come back to what I was going to talk about with the roofing stuff. Um, would be if we if we take a look at yet another one, if we look at um, tree surgeon, right? So tree surgeon, Wikipedia, what comes up? It's arborist. So that's, you guys see that? So if we look up at arborist, then this, this tree, an arborist or tree surgeon, or less commonly an arboriculturalist, is a professional in the practice of arboriculture, which is the, whatever. I don't have to read through that, but I do recommend that you guys do read through the language a little bit because what is the additional category that we typically see, or you guys might not know this, but I do, the additional category that most tree service contractors have, and I'm going to go demonstrate this in Chrome where I have the GMB Everywhere extension so that you guys can see it. But if I say tree service Culpeper VA and I go into maps, you're going to see the primary category is tree service for most tree service companies, but then all of a sudden you're going to see the additional categories pop in. And what do you see? Uh, this is a terrible example of that. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. There we go. There's one finally that has it. That's rare that I don't see it often because usually in most other areas, arborist and tree surgeon. You see that category, guys? Well, if we go look at the tree care entity that we were, we had just a moment ago, if I can find it right here, it, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see it also says uh, right here, uh, see also tree surgeon. So if I open up tree surgeon, that's where it shows redirected from tree surgeon is it redirects to arborist. And it says right here, an arborist or tree, sur or tree surgeon. So they're interchangeable. So all Google did to create that additional category was combine arborist and tree surgeon, which are one and the same into arborist and tree surgeon. And that's one at one topic, one, one Google business category. It's the same as this Wikipedia entity for arborist. Do you understand that? So the word arborist is synonymous with tree surgeon or the category arborist and tree surgeon. Does that make sense? So the point that I'm trying to make, guys, is it gives you some clues as to some of the words that are relevant and interchangeable, number one. Number two, it also gives you kind of some site structure ideas, internal linking ideas, and in page structure ideas, right? And then the last part of this is also identifying how you can create the broadest topic coverage by possibly combining entities or topics together. And that's where I discovered through this process that tree maintenance actually has the broadest coverage of all keywords associated, even more so than tree care, which is interesting because as I was showing you guys before, if I look up tree service Wikipedia or you see tree care is the first entity to pop up. If I look up tree trimming, it might be pruning in this case. Well, still falls under tree care, but you see pruning comes up as the kind of a related entity, um, which is the, the, the second most related entity, according to Google. And if you open up pruning, and I'm going to come, come back to a point here in a minute, but pruning is a horticultural, arboricultural, and silvicultural. I didn't even know what the hell that is. That's the first time I've even seen that. Um, practice involving the selective removal of certain parts of plants, such as branches, buds, or roots. So we, we know that this is pruning. But we can make it more specific because this says for plants, right? S removal of certain parts of a plant. Well, most tree service contractors do tree trimming. They might do shrub trimming and pruning, et cetera. But most of the time, the search query is tree trimming. Well, tree pruning is the combination of tree and pruning together, which makes pruning specific as it relates to trees. Does that make sense? So how I why I bring this up is because I was showing you guys that sometimes you can find these kind of uh, different um, topics and entities that you can combine to create a more specific yet broader topic coverage, if that makes sense. So here's another example. Like I showed you guys just a minute ago with tree removal, um, you'll see felling should be there. Felling is the Wikipedia entity or topic for tree removal as it relates to logging. Uh, but it's that is also a key that is, it, it's synonymous with tree removal. And that's part of the reason why I use that felling dot pro as a sub or as a domain that I use for lead gen assets because felling dot pro means tree removal pro right and so it's a very short and succinct domain but anyways what I was getting at with this was um something else that you guys can do would be to go to Google and identify like for example and I, I I'll give an example of this but um actually let me pause the screen for one minute I'm going to pull up a Google Doc so I can show it to you and I've showed this before on um 
update hangouts but here we go all right so here's an example guys this is something that i like to do manually especially when i'm researching a new industry which i don't typically do this other than when somebody requests me to do it in the mastermind because i don't want to do this for anybody else any other industries other than other than the industry that i work in myself because this does take a, a lot of work and so that's why i don't like to do this and when people ask me to do it for them it, i i'm either going to ask you to pay me or i'm going to do it in a setting where i can train other people on it as well uh so but anyways here's what i call topics and entities right this is an example for you guys to help try to identify for whatever industries you're in, what are the best terms? And sometimes you can create your own topic, essentially, or category by combining Wikipedia topics. And that's what I did when and I figured out that tree maintenance has the broadest topic coverage. And there's probably tools that do this, guys, but I wanted to manually do this for myself anyway. And I recommend that you do, too, because as you're doing this manually, if you go actually scan through and study the Wikipedia pages, then you'll get a better understanding of how Google understands the language associated with that industry. It's one thing to plug something into a tool and have it spit this out and tell you tree maintenance is the most uh, broadest topic coverage in the tree service industry. But it's, a, it's, it's another to understand why that's the case. And that's why I recommend going through this exercise that I'm about to demonstrate. And that is, again, going back to Google and just doing a search. If I look up tree care, for example, not with Wikipedia appended, if I and then if I scroll through here and I, I'll start to identify the keywords that are bolded by Google. So any search query associated with your industry, omit the location modifiers, just go with the topic terms, right, the broad terms, and then scroll through the, the search results and look at the bolded words. Right. The bolded words mean that Google thinks that those words are associated or synonymous. Those words or phrases are synonymous with that that search query, which means they're related. That makes sense. And so what I recommend is if you go through this process and if I looked up tree care, if I looked up tree removal, if I we're going to do just two or three of these guys. But if we just open up a few of these and then I'm going to put in tree maintenance and I'm going to get to a point here. About and I also want, I have another point I want to talk about maintenance as well maintenance A N C E. Um, anyways, going through this process, guys, if you scroll through and and identify all the keywords that are bolded, and just take collect them into kind of a sheet like this. This was the seed query, and then here are all the supporting words that were identified as bolded in search results, and you'll quickly be able to identify what has the broadest topic coverage, and tree maintenance by far beats all the others even the the the, the top level entity tree care it, it's tree maintenance has broader coverage and what is tree maintenance again going back to what i was sharing with you guys that's a combination of tree and then let's go back to google and search for maintenance wikipedia so it's a combination of these two these two oh sorry let me get rid of that and that Oh, shit. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll just close all those down. It's a combination of tree and maintenance to create tree maintenance, one category or one topic that has the broadest coverage. And here's the thing, guys. This is something that I'm going back to the roofing example. Here's another one. If I look for re repairs, Wikipedia, take a look at this. Repairs has a topic, right? It's an entity that redirects to maintenance. Okay. We have maintenance open here. Okay. Do you understand? Repairs equals maintenance. Google's, I mean, Wikipedia is telling us this, and this is how Google understands it as well. So repairs equals maintenance. But then when you read the maintenance language, this is why I keep telling you, study these the language associated with the topics and entities related to your specific industries. Okay? Because this, this can open up so much opportunity that so many others don't ever recognize is there right in front of them. And I didn't either until I figured this out, right? And that is, look at this. The technical meaning of maintenance involves functional checks, which means inspection. And by the way, inspection is down further on the page. Uh, servicing, repairing, or replacing of necessary devices, equipment, machinery, building infrastructure, and supporting utilities in industrial business and residential installations. So what I'm getting at here, guys, do you understand that repairs equals maintenance, but maintenance equals so much more than repairs. Maintenance in, it includes inspection, servicing, repairing, replacing, installation, all of that. So do you understand that maintenance is a much broader topic term that e repairs equals maintenance, but maintenance in, in, uh, includes repairing, replacing, installing, in servicing, and in, uh, inspecting, et cetera. 
So maintenance is a much broader term. And so back to what I was talking about with roofing, guys, and that's all these tabs way over here. It's a lot of damn tabs. But I was actually in our mastermind when I was demonstrating this exact same thing once again. Uh, I had said in during that whatever mastermind webinar that I was doing it, I said, I know because I've got, a, I've got, I've have some of my own local SEO clients that are in the roofing industry. Some are very long time clients of mine. And then I've also have a number of uh, link building clients that have clients in the roofing industry. And so I see it all the time. And I'm not faulting anybody for this because this is how we all did SEO for many, many years. But what I see, especially in roofing, is there's a separate page for roof repair, roof replacement, roof installation, roof inspection, roof cleaning. Uh, all of those, right? So five separate pages alone, roof repair, roof in installation, roof replacement, roof inspection, roof, main, uh, roof cleaning, all of those things I've seen uh, on across dozens of roofing sites, guys. I see a separate page for each one of those. It's not necessary. I mean, you can have a separate page for each one of them. But then what happens is if when when especially with the roofer being a service area business, they never just target one city, right? They want to target the city and then all the adjacent cities and then all the adjacent cities outside of that. And so the next thing you know, if you've got five pages, one for roof repair, roof replacement, roof installation, roof inspection, roof cleaning, et cetera, five pages. Now they've got roof installation, city one, roof repair, city one, roof installation, uh, replacement, city one, roof repair, city two, roof installation, city two, roof uh, replacement, city three or city two, et cetera, right? Next thing you know, if they've got five locations and five cities that they want to target, there's 25 pages on the site that is the same content being said over and over and over again. It's redundant, it's bloat, it cre creates re uh, crawl resistance, et cetera. All of that is completely unnecessary. If you want to have five separate pages where each page is thoroughly optimized for each one of those specific types of roof maintenance, because all of them fall under roof maintenance is what I'm getting at then that's fine, guys. You can have a page that is dedicated to roof installation, one that's dedicated to roof replacement, roof inspection, roof repair, roof cleaning. All of that's fine. But then the location pages, which are the pages that should be, you want to rank for a search query, a local search query, you want to rank the location page. Why not optimize each location page for roof maintenance plus city? Because roof maintenance has the broadest topic coverage that covers every single one of those other terms. So you can have dedicated pages for each one of those specific search queries, keywords, roof replacement, roof repair, et cetera. I've already referenced them. You can have a separate page for each one of those. But the page that you want to rank, which would be the location page, should be optimized for roof maintenance plus city plus state. Why? Because that one keyword, that one topic term, roof maintenance, has the broadest coverage. And what I was getting at here, guys, was I had one of my mastermind members because I said, I almost guarantee it. I've not done this for roofing, but I almost guarantee that roof maintenance will have the broadest topic coverage. And one of our mastermind members did it manually and showed the results. And he was like, you were right. Roof maintenance has the broadest coverage, meaning it has the most terms that Google has considered are synonymous with that seed query, roof maintenance. And so the point that I'm getting at, guys, is if you're going to be building pages uh, and you want to have a separate page optimized for each service keyword, which makes sense, I get it. And that's, by the way, just to be clear, like, let's just, ju just, just jump in here, guys, and show you very quickly. This is, again, back to the D Zutrix, which I use for organic rank tracking. This is a more competitive uh, uh, term. You can see, look at how this has been crawling up and climbing up in the search results. And I currently have half of the 96 keywords. This site's maybe two months old. It's got like six backlinks built to it. Swear to God. Uh, but you can see that it's increasing steadily. And the reason why is because here's the thing, guys. And let me go back to another one. It's a lot less competitive, but I'll show you an example. Again, take a look at this one. This one has uh, 86 out of the 96 keywords, which is really 48 keywords in the top three. You can see like, again, guys, the reason why I bring this up is because Going back to what I've shared with you guys many, many times is this. Look, and and and, and I bring this up because there is a um, Berkeley.felling pro. I want to show what I mean about this. I do still, and I found through my own testing, that I do have separate pages for each keyword, which is what I was just describing about roofing. So you can see I have a page for tree removal, right? I have a page for tree trimming. So whenever it decides to load, tree trimming, right? I have a separate page for tree care, one for stump removal, okay? But what I want to rank are the service, the, the location pages, not the service pages. I want to rank the location pages, 
right? So example, if I go into Inwood, what take a look at the, the title. What I've got here is I've got the topic term, the primary topic term in the H1. I've done a lot of testing with this too, guys. You can interchange the H1 with the SEO title. If you want a more kind of traditional kind of term in the SEO title, because that's what appears in the search results, most of the time Google can swap it out with the H1 if it chooses to. But if you want, you can see how I've got this optimized for Inwood Tree Service and in the brand name, Berkeley Felling Pro. But I have my top level topic term, tree maintenance here. And that one, this one page can rank for every one of those search queries. Why? Because I've referenced them specifically on this page and there's internal links to those top level service pages, but it's not the service page that I'm trying to rank. It's the location page. You understand? So I've got my top level topic term in either the SEO title or the H1, full stop. So that's where I'm getting at with roofing guys. And I know because I've done audits on several roofing pro projects and, and I see the same thing every time. And I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong because three years ago, that's how we did it and it worked, but that's not the best way to do it now. The best way now is if you wanna optimize separate service pages for particular keywords, service keywords, fine, do that. Uh, but then on the, the location pages, which is what you want to rank, you want to rank for those, you want those to rank for the key, excuse me, the, the, the location page. So if we just zoom in on this, uh, sorry, let me put that back. There we go. Okay. So we'll take a look at, uh, sorry, let's go back to the Berkeley Felling Pro one. And I know we're going to run out of time, but um, that's all right. I, I said I was going to spend a lot of time on this one. But we'll take a look at this, guys. Like we'll see uh, the the keywords. Uh, I guess Gerardstown is is ranking really well. But you can see, like for example, the the Gerardstown tree care keyword is ranking. Uh, that is the the location page. It's ranking for tree care. It's not the tree care page. It's the location page ranking for tree care, right? Then Arborist is ranking. It's the it's the location page ranking for Gerard, Arborist Gerardstown. Uh, tree service. It's the location page ranking for tree service Gerardstown. And I've demonstrated that many, many times, guys. Again, very similar site structure. If I go look at tree service Newburgh, Kentucky, you'll notice is when I first started testing this kind of a site structure, that site right there. Again, what are we looking at? We're looking at the top or uh, where we put a top level topic term there and then tree maintenance is the first H2. If that makes sense. And I've showed this many, many times, guys, but it, look at that page. It's the location page that ranks for the keyword. Every single search query that I want to rank for, it's the location page that ranks. Why? Because of what I just shared with you guys. It's Again, you can have separate pages optimized for each one of these services, which is what I did here. But then you, you optimize the location page for the top level, broadest coverage topic term. And then that one page can rank for every single search query associated with those topic in that topic, which is why I said this is an important, in my opinion, a very important exercise to go through, guys, is to go through this, what I just showed you here. Figure this out. And, the, and by the way, this is why I keep telling everybody, those of you that work in 15 industries, good luck. God bless you. Uh, I, I don't know why anybody will want to put themselves through that much effort to learn this kind of stuff. But it, it takes, I'm still doing testing in the tree service industry, guys. Like uh, for real, I just, just I've been doing SEO work for tree services for ten freaking years, and I just discovered this last year. Does that make sense? So uh, that's why I said, and roof maintenance, guys. I promise, any of you in the roofing industry, if you just do what I said, don't believe me, just go out and set up a test site and try it. Optimize for all all the services you want with separate pages, but the location page optimize for roof maintenance. I promise you that one those location pages will perform considerably better, especially if you have internal linking the way that I've been showing with all these types of sites, right? Each service page links to every location page. Every location page or each location page links to every service page. It's one great big reciprocal link. Look at Wikipedia. Where do you think I got the idea? <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyways, hopefully that is clear and hopefully that answered your question, David, for God's sake. <laughs> I've answered that question so many times in the mastermind and I just did it again. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to do it again, guys. But like I said, just uh, next time I'm going to point to an existing training because I feel like I do this all the time, which is okay. I get it. All right. If there are any questions that I need to address in chat. What I was uh, looking at right now, let's see. Let me go back up. Jasper, I just... oh, I see. what's up, Jasper? He's here. What's up, buddy? He said you could do the same research, search keyword plus Wikidata. Yeah, the difference is Wikidata is machine-readable format. 
right? Wikipedia is human readable format. That's the only difference, guys. Again, if you look at Wiki Wikidata, for like for example, if I come over here and do, let me just get rid of some of these because I got so many of them open. So if we look up Tree Care Wikidata, for example, and we click through to that. Oh, that was Wikipedia. Sorry, let me go back. Apparently, it's Arbor Culture and Wikidata. Uh, but you'll see that, again, they're, they're going to list over here the um, Wikipedia entities that are associated with the, that Wikidata entity, if that makes sense. And that's so, again, uh, the way that I look at it is Wikidata is machine readable format. Wikipedia is human readable format. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry, sorry, Adam, you were you were you were starting to say something. No, no, no. I was just going through the questions. Um, somebody, let's see, had said, have you noticed any ranking drops with the removal of the GMB website or is it still too early to notice? Not sure if you No, know. I haven't seen any, not, okay. not, a, not even a single bit. But remember that's because right now that URL, including the post URLs, are being redirected to the GB map URL. Um, and I, I was concerned that the, the post URLs wouldn't, that we would just lost that because I did a lot of link building the post URLs. It's going to disappear as of June 1. That's when they say anyway. They said they were going to uh, redirect the local business or the GB website URLs on March 1st, and they didn't. It was March 5th before they did it. Uh, so they said June 1st is when they're going to drop the redirect. And in that case, the link equity that we built is likely, I mean, if if it's if that's indeed the case, it's gone. It, we lost it. But currently, even the post URLs redirect to the uh, Google Map URL. But it's a multiple 302 redirect. So you're not getting any link equity from that. So it's just, you know, I, but I've not seen any drops from that. Um, just to be clear, I've not seen that affect anything. Cool. All right. I think that's it.